Zippity bippity bobbity boo! My name is Maddie P and I'm talking to you. Today, I want to show you how to use the Pythagorean theorem to generate a new formula for trigonometry. So let's start off by looking at any old right triangle. I'll call that hypotenuse C. One of the legs A, one of the legs B. And we all know that A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Yeah? Yeah. We also know that if we call that angle theta, we have some trigonometric ratios that can come out of this. Does everyone agree that the sine of theta is A over C and the cosine of theta is B over C? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, now using straight or algebra, straight up algebra, I'm going to take this equation and manipulate it very simply by dividing both sides by C squared. I'll get A squared over C squared plus B squared over C squared equals C squared over C squared. What's C squared over C squared? Mm, one. A squared over C squared can be written as A over C squared. And B squared over C squared can be written as B over C squared. Now I'm sure you see where I'm going with this. A over C is sine theta. B over C is cosine theta. I can rewrite this equation as sine theta squared plus cosine theta squared equals one. Now, that's kind of elementary writing. Advanced trig students write this as sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. It's kind of important to put the square on the word sine, not the angle. So people don't think you need to square the angle, because that's not it. You take the value of sine of theta, which we know is some fraction, and we square that. So, lo and behold, what a great phrase that is. Lo and behold, we have a new formula. Sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. The theta is implied.